Hey Nurse Awesome, today we're going to talk about using the nursing process to study pharmacology. Specifically today we're going to look at antihypertensives and we're just going to take a peek at beta blockers because there are a lot of antihypertensive medications. So the first thing I'm going to do would be to grab a little note card and I'm going to fill it full of all the facts, right? I want to know uh, what the real use is, what the off-label use is, what the class is. I want to know the half-life. I want to know how it's metabolized and excreted. I want to know what the normal dose is. I want to know what normal routes are. I want to know uh, contraindications for giving this drug and other things that I might consider as I'm giving this drug, things I need to do first, things I need to follow up with. I want to be able to have some sort of teaching, right? And I'm going to spend some time getting real up close and personal with that little note card. You know, I'm going to cram all that stuff in my head. And then at some point, it's going to want to come leaking out when I fill my head with other details. So that's when the nursing process comes in handy, guys. It helps you to anchor things in like these real life situations that you create in your head. So first things first, assessment, right? Well, there's an assessment piece for every single drug that you're going to give in um, your nursing career. There's something that you need to look for first to keep your patient safe. And in this case, we're going to find out what that is, what that assessment piece is, by asking ourselves, why are they getting this drug in the first place? What does this drug do? All right, so my patient might be getting a beta blocker because they have high blood pressure. They might be getting it because they have anxiety. Um, if it's intraocular, they may be getting it because they have glaucoma. Um, most often, uh, beta blockers are used post-MI to control tachycardia and really funky rhythms. All right? They can be used also uh, to treat AFib. So keeping those things in mind, I'm going to assess my patient for those particular things. I'm going to check their blood pressure, I'm going to check their heart rate, I'm going to look at their EKG strip and make sure that I don't see some sort of heart block developing. I'm also going to look at the other medications that they're being given. Are they having another med that could also decrease their heart rate? Are they on digoxin maybe? Um, is this patient an asthmatic? Because I know that beta blockers and asthmatics do not necessarily mix well, right? So those are things that I'm going to look for as I assess my patient before I ever give them this drug, right? Usually I would tell a little story in my head about the assessment that I was doing it. So next we're going to get to the diagnosis part, and this is the really fun part for me. This is where I got to take all that care plan data and kind of apply it to my patient in this particular situation. If I'm giving a drug, in this case a beta blocker, that I know decreases heart rate, decreases blood pressure, what do I need to actually be looking for in my patient? I've already established that with my assessment, and now I'm going to make a plan to take care of the patient based off of what my assessment data showed me. Nursing diagnoses that are common for people taking beta blockers are decreased cardiac output, activity intolerance, impaired physical mobility, volume overload, ineffective coping. Um, obviously, you're going to want to protect them from falls, right? Because they're going to get orthostatic hypertension more than likely. So then you move from the diagnosis phase over into the planning phase. And that's where you get to say, well, because I assess these things and I know I've given them this diagnosis, I'm going to plan on doing these particular things, interventions for my patient. For example, if I know they have decreased cardiac output, then I'm probably going to make sure that I teach them about orthostatic hypertension. I'm going to make sure they know, hey, you know, don't get up too fast. You could get really dizzy. Call me if you need to get out of bed because I want to prevent falls, right? I'm going to cluster their care together. Those sorts of things go along with someone that's on beta blockers. So if I think about it in that way, it sort of anchors it a little bit better than just sort of looking at that flashcard and memorizing a bunch of facts, right? Because now I'm applying that medication to a real live person, not just a flashcard. Next thing I'm going to do is implement, right? So I'm always, obviously, going to remember the five rights of medication administration. I'm going to check that heart rate. I'm going to check that BP, and that's going to be current information, not something that your patient care tech gathered two hours ago. I'm going to look at the order for parameters to hold the medication. I'm going to look at other medications. I'm going to teach them the side effects about orthostatic hypertension. I'm going to listen to their lungs because this can kind of cause some overload. 
I want to make sure they don't sound like they're getting really wet, right? Um, I also want to make sure that if I'm giving labetalol very uh, IV, that I'm giving it very, very slowly. And uh, the reason for that is because you can throw someone into heart block really easy by giving them a beta blocker too fast, right? Okay, so the evaluation piece follows, and in that piece is really just my reassessment, right? How's that heart rate doing? Am I still seeing a good rhythm, or is my patient now bradycardic? Is the bradycardic symptomatic? Is it not symptomatic? How's their rhythm doing? Is their uh, EKG still normal? I'm lucky in my unit because you know, I, I work in ICU and so patients are always hooked up to cardiac monitors so I can always see my patient's rhythm. It might not be so easy if you're on the floor. You may need to make a phone call to the telemetry guys and ask them to look and make sure your patient's not gone into first degree heart block. You need to check because it's important. If you don't look at an EKG strip first and your patient is already in first degree heart block and you give them a medication that's going to slow that conductivity down even more, you could really do some harm to them, right? So I want you to understand that there's not one single piece of that nursing consideration part of pharmacology that is unimportant, all right? These big humongous books that they give you about pharmacology, there's no way you're gonna possibly remember all this data. Super important that you know the really bad things that can happen to your patient because of the drug. Super important to know the contraindications. Super, super important to know what it is that you're going to do when you implement this particular medication, when you give it to them, to protect your patient from harm, right? Because that's your first job as a nurse. Protect your patient. Keep them safe. You have to do that when you give medications too. All right, so I think that I've communicated well how I sort of painted a picture using the nursing process of how you know beta blockers work and what my role in administration is for them. For me, it really created this kind of story in my head so that I, you know, when I actually walked into a patient's room, I could replay that story. It wasn't just a flashcard. I could say, oh, Mr. Patient, I know you, I'm gonna keep you safe because I'm gonna take your blood pressure first before I give you and medication that will decrease your blood pressure. Oh, I'm gonna keep you safe because I'm gonna teach you about orthostatic hypertension. All of those things um, were, were kind of like solid in my head because I used the nursing process. I don't want you to mistake this and think that this is gonna take you a ton more time to do because it really doesn't. Maybe you don't use it on every single medication, you need to use it on those that you're going to use a lot because you're going to see them on NCLEX and you're going to see them over and over again when you become a nurse. <sighs> that was just a mouthful, wasn't it? So I'm going to make one about uh, pain medication next and see if we can give you a little bit more detail, help you use the nursing process to study pharmacology. If you have any questions, shoot me an email. I'm always happy to wrap with you guys. Until next time, peace.